at Carlton in September and it's actually funny because Carlton was like the last option on my list. I got four out of five of the architecture programs that I applied to. So I decided that Carlton was the best fit for me. I remember I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew what I was doing. I remember meeting with Karen for the first time at around like August last year. And then she gave me all this feedback and told me all these new things that I didn't know. And I was just so fed up. Karen was giving me so much feedback. I had to redo my like, pieces over and over and over again. But I can say that it was so worth it. Something that I learned like immediately at the beginning from Karen and just from the whole process is that it's not just about like what you're making, like you can, you can, you don't have to be the best artist in the world. Like you don't have to present the best drawings and the most complicated things. It's kind of also about how you present. I, I personally don't like the drawings and stuff that I like put into my portfolio, but I realized that it's kind of the way that I explained, this. Um, I explained each um, piece and um, like the reasoning behind everything. You can't just pick a color because it looks nice. You can't just, you know, make it look a certain way because, you know, you thought it looked cool. If you have a reason for everything, if you can convince like the admissions officer that, you know, you thought everything through, they just want to know how you think and, you know, the thought process and, you know, all the ideas and the general concept that you put in. So your work doesn't have to be like, you know, a professional like level. I'm going to show you guys my portfolio now. So this first piece is what I think and what Karen and I thought was my strongest piece. So you always want to start with your strongest piece because you want to draw them in. Um, and so this was one of the prompts from Carlton. Carlton had eight prompts uh, and you had to pick four of them. My Carlton portfolio was really difficult because the prompts were so like simple and so vague. So the first one was the world around me. So I guess instead of going for like the cliche, like, you know, sense of community and all that, um, what was going on in the world at the time was like the pandemic. Instead of making like a nice, you know, friendly piece, um, I was going to, you know, show them like, this is like what I'm like growing up in. So you kind of want to like, have a bit of a shock factor. So this was the second prompt. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this piece, to be honest. So that's why I put it in second. You want to start with a bang and end with a bang. So you want to take your strongest pieces at the beginning and another strong piece at the end. You want to kind of have a theme in your portfolio. So my theme is like myself, I guess, if that makes sense. Like each piece has a bit of me in it. This is the third prompt. I was trying to make a piece for this prompt, but I really didn't know what I was doing. I was kind of just messing around and I sent it to Karen and she thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I, I didn't even know what I was looking at, right? So um, we kind of just came up with this whole concept of time represented by, you know, the circle and the spiral. So that's why the text is like really important because I'm, I've convinced you that this is what this is and there's no other possibility for this. And so that's something that's really important with like architecture and design because most of the time you'll be working with clients and stuff. So they come to you with what they want. You have to convince them this is the best option that they have and that you've done everything they've asked for. So this next piece is also a prompt, uh, a detail of two materials coming together. So I picked two materials that don't come together at all. The prompt clearly like asked you to pick something that mixes. And so I picked literally two things that don't, like they will never mix. Um, so I thought that was really smart of me. So this is not my, one of my strongest pieces like artistically. I had to add a lot of like filters on this to make it look presentable as long as you know it has meaning and it's like relevant to the topic and you know has a good concept um it's good to go this is another prompt uh something made so this is one of my favorite pieces actually i took thread and i put paint on it and i folded a paper and just pulled it through and just scribbled all over like you know wrote some words 
this piece took me about 10 minutes, um, but you probably wouldn't think that like looking into it. So it's about like truth and um, how truth is kind of just like a made up reality. Your point of view could be different to the point of view of someone else's truth. This was a strong piece just because um, it's more conceptual. And so you want to have a mix of like conceptual work and, um, you know, technical work because there's not one school that just wants to see like, you know, just drawings. You want to kind of show them that you can do all kinds of different things. Myopia is like nearsightedness, which is what I have. Um, and so I took a picture um, that I had taken when I went to LA um, and it was really blurry. So I pixelated it and then I made it even blurrier in the painting. So it kind of represents uh, how I see the world, like without my glasses. This was one of my UBC creative tests. So UBC gives you three uh, creative, like, prompts and you have two to three weeks to um, get them done. UBC is the one school I didn't get into, um, but that's okay because the pieces that I made for the creative test were actually super helpful for my, my uh, portfolio in general. So I had to come up with a, a lamp design using my phone. So it could be anything that I wanted. This one I think was um, really strong for Ryerson. Ryerson is known for being innovative and their co-op program, like they have a lot of companies that they work with and employ like students. They're looking for like, you know, innovation and new ideas and, you know, things that they haven't, that you haven't seen before. So I think this was a, a strong piece for them. This piece was a pain to make. <laughs> But it was also, it was really strong. It was one of my, another UBC uh, creative tests. So I had to pick a building in the world and uh, design a, a pet home for it. I'm Egyptian. And so I thought, why not like put that in? Like you always want to use your experiences like to your advantage. Like if you've traveled a lot in your life or if you've done like, I don't know, cool things, you want to like, be smart about how you put it in. So you kind of use that to your advantage. Um, UBC's application was like a three-step um, process. There was, um, I had to put a resume, I had to do my creative test. There was a personal profile. So if you are looking in, looking to apply to UBC, you want to, you know, get your personal profile and, um, and all the like documents done earlier because you get your link for the creative test um, as soon as you press submit. So you're giving yourself more time to work on it. So that's just something to think about. This I came up with an explanation for like after I had done it. Um, I was working with Karen on like doing more three-dimensional things. We talked about the concept of tensegrity and about how the structure is like standing still without like a clear support beam. So basically it's just held together by this really thin piece of thread. If you're going to build something, having the process and the concept sketches is really useful because it shows like the development, like you drew it out, you thought it through, and if you have all the measurements and everything, you're kind of you know starting a project and finishing it so that's really good for them to see this is an untitled project it was a project that i did uh, at school we had to take like a log and carve something into it so i decided to like look into my culture and like my roots i kind of went into like you know islamic like um architecture and designs and carved that into it this is pretty literal this is a yearbook cover that i did back in 2018. It was a competition. And so you had to design the like the cover. And so mine got chosen. Seeing your designs get turned into things is really good for them to see because it tells them that, you know, you're, you have a diverse like variety of experiences and you like delved into different kinds of areas. This is a tool drawing that I also did in school. And what sets it apart is that it's five feet tall. So we had to make it like our height. I took a picture next to the drawing to show like its actual height. Truth versus reality. It was another uh, UBC creative test. It's kind of just talking about how like reality isn't like looks like. Truth is what you want people to see and not what it actually is. This is 
paper bag. So this one, actually, I remember like Karen literally told me to make something up because it was just a drawing. And so that's the thing with this, with like portfolios is that a lot of the time you don't really know what you're doing. Half of these pieces I'm looking at right now and I don't even remember what they meant. They want someone who's certain about their work. Because, you know, designers, they sell things to people, they create things for people. So you want to make sure that there's a need for your products. This was one of my favorite projects that like I ever did. Back in grade 10, we had um, a personal project. So you had to pick anything, like any topic and work on it for six months. I wanted to do something that I liked because I mean I noticed all my friends were miserable doing their projects. I was one of the only people that actually enjoyed this project um, because it was something I was passionate about and it shows a lot of different skills. So like I painted these clothes, took these photos, like I like I did everything that has to do with this project. And so this project I think is one of my like strongest. You wouldn't see a lot of people doing this. So I think it really set me apart. Um, because it was like a six month um, long project. So it was pretty complex and had all the different like skills that you would um, want in a portfolio. My friends, I had them like model the clothes. So I think that was also like a good thing. I kind of like collected a group of people. Like I made a team of people and like, you know, I was able to organize something. When you're submitting your portfolio, there's a little box where you can like write more about the piece. So I explained that. This is a video called Loss. I had a horrible time making this. I hate nature um, because I grew up in the Middle East and we don't go, like I didn't grow up going camping and all of these kinds of things. So it was a really difficult experience for me, but I used that to my advantage. You know, I talked about how I explored something new, like an area that I'm not really comfortable with. I did some research about like why that is and, you know, the whole idea of like getting lost. This was also one of my favorite pieces at the end, not making it though. My last piece is um, a photography piece. So I went to uh, the National Art, Art Gallery um, in Ottawa and I took pictures of the ceiling. And so architectural photography uh, is also a really good thing to like add into your portfolio because if you can capture like a building or a piece of a building like really well, that's also really impressive to them. So yeah, this is my portfolio. Do you guys have any questions or anything you want to look at again?